This program is made solely to help practicing orbit and oculoplasty surgeons during COVID times and is a work of non-fiction. The authors do not have any financial disclosure in the subject matter of this film. The COVID-19 pandemic has presented an unexpected task to the healthcare community the world over. We, as oculoplastic surgeons, need guidance on how to safely handle procedures at this time. Viral transmission has been shown to take place through aerosols from tears, blood and surgical smoke. To delve further into this mystery and prove or refute certain guidelines, we have designed the following series of experiments. We collaborated with the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore along with Dr. Saptrishi Basu and his team of mechanical engineers. Our setup includes commercially available food grade chicken applied onto our wet lab mannequin to simulate human periocular tissue. We created an OT table like setup to facilitate use of our instruments. Using the lab's ultra high resolution camera, we recorded our results. Our first research question involved questioning the presence of aerosols during lacrimal syringing. We used a 22 gauge cannula and cut it to the length of the average canaliculus. We chose this particular size as its diameter closely resembles that of the canalicular lumen, which is 0.5 mm. Using a 26 gauge syringing cannula, we injected normal saline into our artificial canaliculus, which was closed at one end to simulate a blocked lacrimal drainage system. With the help of a feature called shadowgraphy, our scientists found that droplets generated by syringing were much larger than the size of the largest aerosol and would hence settle and not travel. Thus, from our model, we can conclude that syringing when performed correctly does not pose harm when donning appropriate protective gear, using a betadine solution while syringing, and preparing the mucosal surfaces with povidone iodine solutions prior to syringing or endoscopy or DCR surgery. In our second experiment, we studied surgical smoke and suction in electrocautery as diathermy plume has been deemed as an aerosol and contains 5% cellular debris which has been found to have viruses. We routinely employ the use of a bipolar cautery for the purpose of hemostasis and monopolar cautery for cutting tissues. While using the bipolar on our model, we can see clearly how our three French suction cannula operating at 10 to 15 millimeters of mercury of suction is evacuating a large majority of the smoke. A closer look with our monopolar, we can see that surgical smoke is cut off when held steady and on shadowgraphy, we calculated that only 10% of the smoke escaped when the tip was held at 1 to 2 centimeters from the instrument. Thus, 90% of the smoke was suctioned off. When shadowgraphy was performed on a wet field with a 15 number blade, we noted that there were no aerosols produced whatsoever. We recommend an adequately sized and closely held suction tip to evacuate maximal smoke. It is also advisable to pre-fill the suction bottles with povidone iodine that will neutralize infective material to the extent possible. Having a dedicated surgical smoke evacuator with a disposable funnel can minimize risks and ensure a safe OT environment. We next drilled bone with our 35,000 RPM micro drill with 3 mm burr tip on the bone of the experimental model. As per the AO Foundation's recommendation for craniomaxillofacial surgeons, while drilling, limit or eliminate irrigation. However, we found that even without irrigation, on shadowgraphy, we could calculate that droplets of the order of aerosol size are still produced, which travel to a distance within the positioning of the surgeon and the assistant and would not affect the bystander. We thus advise minimizing drill use as well as avoiding irrigation and using slower speed settings on the drill. 
Hence, we can safely perform lacrimal syringing. We prefer cold steel instruments as opposed to electrosurgical ones. And drilling with or without irrigation is to be minimized or avoided. That's all from Team NN with regards our oculoplastic basic science experiments.